Okay, so here she is uh, out of the uh, isopropyl alcohol 99% bath. Uh, they came out pretty good. Uh, not as good as I had thought. Uh, I don't know what kind of paint was used on this. Um, Andy Dorsch uh, most generously donated this model to me, and uh, which is makes you know it gives me more motivation to want to restore it and run it on river road just as a tribute to you know the channel there the podcast that mike and andy have a couple of great guys if you're not familiar with it uh, you might want to check it out they do uh is it uh, every two weeks a uh, great podcast of uh, all the model railroaders out there etc um so yeah so this is gonna uh, take on a new life and a new job uh on river road it'll be the main um a workhorse for the uh, I, uh, Ipex Plastics, um, most notably, along with probably 381. Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I've got the... Um, Basic shell all stripped, uh, it's good enough. Uh, none of this black came out of here. Like I say, it was, uh, I think it was a, that Badger polyurethane paint. Uh, you can get it up, most of it off with IPA, but when you get into these engraving areas, uh, it was pretty stubborn, but I'm gonna leave that. So it's acceptable to me. I'll be, have to paint those anyway. So when I spray this thin coats of the blue, uh, this will always come out darker and that's the look that I want okay because the top of this is going to be black anyway so uh, this is a really good uh, shell and, and body the long hood is very nice like the detail like I went over the photos and studied this and there's really nothing I need to change on here that requires any kind of modification um, I could change some things up, but it would be an exercise in futility, I think, or just a practice for modeling. You can do that for that reason. You see here, I just plugged off uh, these marker lights. There are none on this short uh, hood. So I just plugged them with 40 thou uh, evergreen dowel and solvent. So they're nice and mushy. And then when I clean them and sand them up, they'll clean up good. Um, so that means that uh, I'm probably not going to use these two kits, but I'm going to keep these because these are, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, GP and SD um, kits. So they they basically deal with the Dash 2 and uh, EMD 35 and 40 series. So I'm not going to waste these on this particular model because this is good enough. It really is. Uh, and apart from adding other little details from associates and cow scale, etc., uh, this will build up to be a, a perfectly uh, adequate and highly detailed locomotive. However, I will be using the fan sets though. Like these are very nice. These thin wall EMD radiator fans. This is part RF1702. Uh, Canon Company, uh, you kind of got to go through it. Like just go, like I love, this is what I like about brick and mortar stores. Okay, I'll just say this quick. I can go in and physically look at the stuff. I'm not looking at a photo or a text. I want to know what I'm grabbing. and uh, But it doesn't guarantee that you won't use it. But it's just nice to be able to go in there and then to source out all your detail parts as well. So I'll be using the fans for these. They're beautiful fans. They're photo etched little mini fan kits. They're beautiful. I've used them before. I've used all this stuff before in the past. They're, they're it when it comes to super detailing and bashing up a locomotive okay so there's the uh, emd dynamic fan set okay and so and then i won't be using this emd turbo hatch there's no there's no reason there's nothing wrong with this one it's in the right place uh, however i will be using this emd fuel tank detail set which i think is pretty cool uh, it's td-2156 and it deals with all emd road units and switchers 40 series to present so there's all the little extra details there that you can detail up your fuel tank with, okay? And then there's all the assortment of um, what I call GAC or details. There's HO scale uh, diesel associates. Uh, I don't know what the, the story is on, on this company, whether they're still 
in business or it's just a lot of overstock left but i grab it when i can see it uh, these coupler lift bars second gen ones they have the detailed brackets they're fiddly to put on but they're really nice then there's the cal scale uh, they have the eyelet rings instead so they're not accurate in that sense but they're still pretty good and then there's other things like you know headlight pile bezels mu receptacles lift ring tabs these i like these high-tech details they're rubber and uh, so you like insert them with the the end of the rubber sprue that they have with some ca in behind the pilot etc and they don't break Okay, and they're rubbery, and they're very detailed. Really, really nice stuff by High Tech Details. And then, of course, there's miniatures by Eric, right? The brass, horns, etc. And then there's some plastic eye bolts, which I just grabbed just as a backup, but I don't like to use them that much, really, because they break so easily. But, you know, they're, they're quite detailed as well. Now, just to close quick on the lights uh, i'll be using these by uh, motown models i really like these i order these these are 10 packs i get them from motownmodels.com he's really good over there he's the ship is shipping like he gets on it right away um, these are color are warm white which i like personally for all lights on my local models i switch to these they just have a look to them that just seems to be right and if you order these you'll see you can get just the regular leds or the ones with HO lens. Like he actually mounts the lens onto the LED, which I like because I just thread them through the ditch light or light bezel receptacle. And I just pull them through and tag them on the back with a little bit of canopy glue or whatever, and they're good to go. Really like them. And they have the, the, um, the shielded wires, black and white, very thin too. So you can sort out when you're wiring them. There's no guessing there. And then there's speakers. This I won't be using, that's too big, but that's a mega bass speaker. You can build your own speaker enclosure. These come with speaker enclosures. The Soundtracks Sugar Cube speakers, if I can use the term, are already built up, which are kind of nice, right? And then there's these, which I use quite a bit of, the ESU Loke Sound number 50321s. I really like these. And they come with a little kit for your speaker enclosure. But I like to custom build my speaker enclosure, but I'll probably use two of these on this okay so i'm just plugging the marker lights because they're not on the short hood on this particular 385 st35 by sry Notice how I really slathered on the cement to form a little bit of a, you know, a gooey puddle on the front because it'll fill that with plastic. Then I won't have to fill it with filler. Okay, so I just want to talk about the front pilot. In this case, this anvil on 385 here. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, you can use to distinguish the character, the individual character of a specific locomotive is by studying the pilot. They're almost all different in many ways. Like some might have three hoses, four, two, uh, this anvil piece here for the couplers can be different, uh, and especially the plows. Like, this is very unique to this particular locomotive. If you look at this, like, this looks like it was modified. It almost looks like, like, I don't know if this is a standard. I'm not a, really up on the American locomotives, but this is unusual. 
And that is one detail because you're always going to look at details and you're going to say, okay, what should I add and what should I leave out? Like what is feasible here, like an HO scale? Now we can do all this detail on the front, uh, obviously the parts are available, but this, there's no anvil like this available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch this in with evergreen plastic. This piece comes with the, the uh, kit or not kit, but this locomotive, like the detail parts uh, in these gold series HO, the new molds, the new, like later ones are excellent. Like they really are. Like um, a lot of these details I don't even really need because they're already provided, uh, you know, with the kit. So, but you know, you know how it is, right? We like to change things and uh, improve upon things if we can. So I want to improve upon this by creating this anvil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this footing piece, okay? It's like a kind of a running board with the footing. I'm going to glue this in. I'm going to squeeze that in tight. And then I'm going to shave off these grates or these footboards. Um, and then I'm going to build up out of evergreen plastic. This It's a sort of tapered anvil. It's very unique. Like, see how there's a return here on the bottom? It's like a... Um, it's not at all like, you know, the traditional snow plows that you see, right? Which is kind of interesting. Okay, so that, this here is important uh, when it comes to details, I think, because it really uh, makes a statement about this particular locomotive. Okay, so you can see that I've basically drafted the anvil on this stock, which is uh, number 187, 125 by 156. Just a tad bit fatter than what I need, but this is total subtraction, right? I'm going to carve this. Total subtraction meaning I won't be adding to this, or hopefully not. So you can see how I drafted the line. So this will be carved down. To this bottom line here because this bottom line is going to be this part this bucket or shovel end and then I try to get this angle in here and there is a little bit of a well it's it's not really well it is kind of curved on the bottom but not so much here there's more of a, a rounded corner in the center here which can be sanded but you can see how I'm doing this on a longer piece so I can hold it right give me something to hold the piece and then I'll just cut it off and then it'll get uh, glued in place and also you can see this piece I used from the kit where I shaved off those footboards and put this bottom plate on you can see that these pockets here for the MU hoses they're actually in this piece as well see so I saved that part so I didn't have to do that it's a nice little detail It'll look good when those pockets are dark and you have rust lighter rust they'll still pop and show better and then you can actually drop the mu hoses down in there but this is the shape that i'm after here so i'm just going to carve it on this and sand or whatever and then maybe add a piece onto the end and then just glue it in place and then just in closing quick you can see this plate it's a bit heavier this plate here obviously even than the rear plate the rear plate has nothing it just drops down it's a plain plate on the rear. This one has a plate, an indication of one, but, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it. So, yeah. Okay, so I cut the ends off the anvil piece now, and you can see I uh, cut them uh, when I cut them away from the block, I cut a little bit proud and then I came back and then just cut the angle. There's a little bit of an angle on the end downward sort of that I want. I want to add this little cap piece in, a little piece of scrap for that. Now, before I put this into that plate and that lower block, I want to just chamfer the rear corner like this. Just take off the corner. Okay. 
so that when you sit it in to the little uh, return there on the plate, it, it sits flush. If there's any glue bead in behind there, um, that little chamfer will accommodate it and it'll sit nice and flush. Okay. I'm going to use some uh, Plastrux solvent here. Make sure it's nice and tacky. But not too much. Okay. Okay, so I just want to show you how I attach these ditch lights. So this particular uh, set is by Detail Associates and they work perfectly for this particular EMD front pilot application. So you can see ditch light and stand number 1022 and it comes with like I'll show you the rear ones I did them already so this has ditch lights in the same place on the pilot on, on front and rear and they come with these four square plates but you can see that I just nibbled off the corner a bit just to fit tuck in beside the anti-climber there uh, I didn't want them out too far they uh, according to the photograph um, you can see them here they're tucked in just inside that stanchion Okay, now not all these stanchions are exactly positioned right on this particular model. So you can see where I covered the hole up just a little bit there. And I'll just re-drill that and attach the stanchion. Okay, or I can cut that little out. But after this is all set, it'll be easier to do that. Now, you can put these on the way they are. There's a little uh, um, indentation on the other side. You can do that because the back side of these has a little bit of a nub. I'll show you here. So I just want to take that off. Normally that little nub will fit into that little indentation, but I didn't do it here because um, I messed up on the other side. I put them on backwards or like one was up and one was down, but it doesn't matter though, because I'm going to weld this uh, ditch light bezel right onto this plate. And then tomorrow when it's set nice and hard, just melt it on there real good. Okay, just like that. Sorry if I got off camera there. Um, so that, and then I'm going to drill that out, but I'll do two or three drill steps, a very small one, medium, and then to the full size of the particular LED with lens that's going to go in there. And you can see these ones I've already done. They're already drilled out. Okay. And the size, the right size for that is a 1.6 mil drill bit and you can see and also like what will happen is is you'll drill into the upper riser in here above the step which is okay because you've got to run the wires through underneath this for a, a deck plate and up inside the locomotive up to the decoder so uh, that's okay because these are open anyway and that was a solid piece in there so by drilling that out as well or knifing that out some uh, you're just clearing it, and it, that's the way the prototype is anyway. So you can run your wires through there. So these worked out really good. Uh, normally in the past I've scrapped or scratched these out of tubing because I didn't have these uh, on hand. But uh, you can get these at any 
uh, hobby shop or model ra railroad train store that uh, uh, supports detail associates or whatever. Okay. Okay, I just want to point out the EMD turbo hatch here. So I think I mentioned earlier that I wasn't going to bother because this one looks pretty good, right? So, and it looked like it was glued on. So what I did was I thought, oh, I'm going to see if I can remove it. So I just knifed the edge all around and then went from the inside and I was able to pop it out. So that's kind of cool because this one, even though it's pretty good by Atlas, uh, it's solid. Whereas this one by Canon and Company, you can see it comes with two. I'm not going to change this whole plate, but this is for if you want to build up, you know, the top of the long hood or whatever. But uh, this, uh, I'm not going to replace this. There's no need for it for the plate. But the actual hatch is pretty cool and it's see-through and it drops right in. See? And that'll be cool. Especially with sound, it's just more uh, venting for sound to get out or whatever, if that makes a difference. But it does, but it looks pretty cool though, because you can see through it. Okay. Okay, so the thin wall EMD dynamic fans by Canon and Company here. DF1852 is the part number for these. And to sort these out or to figure these out, it seems simple, right? And they are once you build one or two, but if you're not familiar with it, the best way to do it is to understand the, the five part descriptions and the parts list, like the grill rings, okay, which are these, okay. Then the upper fan hub, which are these units here. Okay, there's actually numbers. You can see three there and four. So they do have number three. Okay, upper fan hub. And then they have riser rings, which are these little half rings on the side here. And then uh, fan base assembly number two, which is here, it's just number two. And it's the fan base assembly. And then there's the etch, the lower fan hub etchings. Okay. So once you understand what the parts are on the sprue and in the kit itself, if I can call it that, then as you read blade and hub assembly, final assembly installation, uh, it should all go well. So I'll show you some of the steps anyway. Okay, so I want to try and show you how to assemble these fans. Um, the, the challenge is staying in focus and dealing with these tiny parts like this. But um, you can see I have this assembly uh, built up like the first half. And then this ring and, and grill goes over top like this. See, this is what happens there. <laughs> Everything's perfect off camera and then on camera. It's like, oh, here we go. Okay, you can see the difference. So here's the stock one. And uh, this is the Canon cab. See the difference there? Of course, it's not painted, but I mean, the Atlas one's pretty good, but this is fine scale modeling. Like that's, you know, that's what it amounts to. Or an actual fan is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six parts. Uh, it's eight parts if it's a GP application. So the SD, you don't use these spacers here. See these here? There's these spacers right here and here. 
they go underneath. There's, I don't know why they made them in halves, but so they would, uh, if it's a Jeep, then you pack them out with these rings. But if it's SD, you leave them off on the dynamic fan. So you can see the difference. I mean, these are, um, I think they come apart, these actually. Yeah, they do. You can see the... You can see how they come apart, uh, the Atlas fans. I mean, they're pretty good, right? But uh, they're nowhere near as nice as these, in my opinion. Um, so you can paint uh, these... Like if these are shopped out, like these rims, like, like replaced or you can paint them primer separate, then glue them on, it's up to you. But I'm just going to paint mine black. But uh, one of the tricks here that you have to make sure is um, when you cut these etchings out, make sure there's no nibs like sprues. Just stroke it nice with some 600 dry grit sandpaper. So it's nice and smooth. And then this etch part, there's a little edge, believe it or not. You probably can't see it on the camera, but it's there. And this sits inside of it like that perfectly. Okay, which is a marvel to me. Like the way they pulled that off is beautiful. And I remember building these, I think, 30 years ago, and they're still the same. So once you get that in there, uh, you just hold it in place gently and then I take a very uh, small pointer like this and then I use thin CA not medium thin okay and I put it on a piece of plastic like this and I just dip my probe in and I just put it where the reinforcing bar is I just rub it in like that on the inside side of the rim just gently around every second one or so and it'll hold. I mean, it sits in there practically by gravity anyway. Um, so that's how you assemble that. This is uh, two hub pieces. And then this piece here, I'll show you how this piece goes together. So you take this hub off. It says to use CA to glue these two hubs together, but you don't really need to. Uh, you can use solvent. It's uh, injection molded styrene. I don't know why they would recommend CA for that. If it's uh, injection molded styrene, you just use solvent. Just wick it in and it doesn't make a mess. CA can make a mess, but if it's a small part, um, it probably won't affect it. So you um, slip this etched fan and I would chamfer the end of this a little bit so you slip this fan over that rod like that okay and then you take the other half And it sort of pops on and then you can wick in a little bit of solvent um, just on the outside a little bit like that and that should glue it fine now what you do with this fan you see how the blades are flat like that on a flat plane when you take them like this you face the fan sideways like this and then you bend these blades 15 degrees counterclockwise like this. So there's your fan base assembly. And then your upper grill piece sits on top like that. Okay, sorry if it got out of focus there. Uh, there's, there's this much of a focal plane. 
when you're zoomed in and uh, it's really easy to get out of whack when you're doing something fine scale like this which I don't normally do but uh, sorry if that did go out of focus okay so there you have your fan and then there's a little knobby that's on the inside of this atlas opening uh, I just nibble that off and then I just drop it in like that this one will go on top when I glue that one in and you got a beautiful looking dynamic fan with the open grill on the turbocharger vent as well and I just use a little bit of uh, cement on the inside Oops, sorry. Uh, I just use a little bit of cement on the inside. And there you have it. Okay. This is some thin CA and the little eyelet rings. And I'll have to say that these are as good as they get from Atlas. They fit tight and they're, they're almost a type of Delrin plastic. They're not like a, I have some other sets. There's metal ones too, but I find the metal ones to be just a little bit too large if you're a rivet counter. And I'm a rivet counter. <laughs> I admit it. No, I'm just, listen, uh, when you super detail your own locomotive, um, why not? Why not do this? And those fit nice. One more to go. Okay, so this is probably the most challenging detail part you'll ever come across in HO if you're super detailing a locomotive. And I'll just point out why. So it's been a while since I've done this. I did it, I think, on 381, my uh, SD38. And I forgot how much of a challenge they were, but I did get them. But here's what happened, and I'll just tell you. So... The trick is to get one, like you got to nibble these off the sprue here, but you want to leave a little bit of a post on the bottom to go into the holes on the pilot. Now, here's the problem. If you add ditch lights in the pilot like this, these holes are not going to be in the proper position. They have to be lower. So you can either fill the holes in and re-drill them, or you can cut, nibble off the sprue and just so they're flush on the back and then put them a little bit lower so the bar, the cup of lift bar, clears the bottom of the ditch light plate. Uh -huh. I did the first one, I thought, oh no, it's too high, so I was able to pull it out and save it. And then I cut them all flush, and then I got this one started. So I glued this one in, but first put all of these, thread these on to the bar. Thread one, two, three, four onto the bar, so they all angle downwards, okay? You'll, once you get one, you'll figure out how to do it. Get two on this side and two on this side, and then just start one or somewhere. You've got to start one. And once you get one, then you can line up the rest. But this will challenge you to no end. It'll really test your dexterity, okay? But I'm glad that that worked out and that I discovered that issue because it's going to be the same on the rear here these i filled in these were the mu holes and they have to be lowered according to the prototype photo they're quite a bit lower than what they are on the model here i don't know why they're so high on the model here but that's okay so i'll be doing the same here and then once i get these coupler lift bars on then i'll install the mu hoses or the air hoses and then uh, i need to build two uh, mu Uh, receptacles uh, yeah two uh, two more receptacles okay so coupler lift bar and if you can still get these by detail associates I'll just say right now grab them 
because apparently what I'm hearing is this company is no longer producing, you know, adequate stock anymore. So, because I think it was a, goes way back this, this business and the family's kind of passed on and I don't know if whoever's taking it over is keeping everything up to snuff. I could be wrong, but that's what I was told by a reliable source. So if you see these parts, grab them, okay? Okay, so I decided I would try to show how to thread these little journals onto the lift bar. Okay. Now, for me, the easiest way is, is to basically leave them on the sprue. Cut, cut the, like there's eight, so cut, cut it in half so you just have four, because there's four for each side, right? And then you want to make sure, like, you can see how this bracket kind of angles downwards right they're actually orientated in a downward position if you put them on backwards they'll face up but on the prototype they're, they're face down they hang down a bit boy did they ever do these things right um, so I'm going to come underneath here like this with the bar okay this is the work of uh, surgeons here <laughs> And then you just thread the bar through like this. Okay, so let's see, did I get that right? Nope, it's upside down. So I gotta take it back. Once you get the first one on, it should be good. Okay. There, we got it, see? So there's the first one. Now, now that you know that that's the orientation, and you're gonna probably mess up once or twice, I'm going to take that and I'm just going to nibble off the sprue flush because I'm gluing them fr flush to the raw plastic pilot. There's no paint, right? So it'll weld really nice with Plastruck solvent. For those of you that are not sure this here, Plastruck weld. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is you can either slide this down all the way down again to the far end. And then do the same. Okay, so I've got the first bracket or journal or whatever you want to call it started right here. Okay. Now notice how I put the coupler lift bar into where the holes where the railings would go, which are obviously not on the model at this point, it really helps to center the piece and hold it in place. Now I'm going to leave these two middle ones loose for now. And I'll just show you how I get this one. So I'm going to use my number 11 blade and I find that this good old trusty number 11 blade is the tool to use for this type of work as most of you veteran modelers will attest. So I'm going to get that okay so there we are. So I'm going to take a bit, I'm going to wick the brush with some solvent and I'm just going to slide some in there and then I'm going to use Sorry for my fat hand. There we go. So that 
is in place. Okay. And then the next one you can see, they get easier. Especially when you get the two end pieces. Okay, so I've got the front pilot all done and I've drilled out the ditch lights that are mounted in the pilot and I drilled them out with four drill, drill bits, right? Small to 1.6. 1.6 is the final finish, okay? So that you don't, you know, muck them up, right? And I start the hole with the number 11 first, centered. And then I start with a very small drill bit. And then I work up at, at least three sizes, but I like to do four just to be safe because I don't want to mess the bezel up. So these are the lights that I really like to use. I get them from Tom at Motown Models. I've mentioned him before and I use, apply his uh, lighting uh, to all my models now because they're convenient. And I order the ones with lenses. He actually mounts the lenses on them if you order them that way and I'll show you why. So you just feed the wire through and they pop right into place and they're beautiful. See that? Okay, and then they go up to your decoder. So that's how I do pilot mounted ditch lights okay with detail associates bezels plastic and the reason why i use plastic in closing is i don't risk shorts these these wires okay there's a wire that's soldered to the led and i don't want to risk shorting them out that's why i don't use the metal ones so if you use plastic you don't have to worry about shorting out your led once you get them all mounted in okay So this little air conditioner I just made up with some strip and some 10 thou sheet and a couple little vents from a, uh, actually you want to know how I made this air conditioner? It's just made it out of sheet and I used this C30-7 rear intake grills <laughs> for the sides and the front. That's it. Really simple, just a little rectangular box. So AC, it makes for a nice little AC unit and I have the Sinclair antenna and it has a, um, not this here, this gets cut off. I just plug in a hole. There's another little UHF or whatever antenna that goes on there. And the renowned Nathan K5 LLA, which goes right here. And, uh, us Canadians, we really like our Nathan K5s. And there's nothing like a Nathan K5 echoing in the mountains of British Columbia. Okay, so uh, I didn't cover all the little nicky knackies on this uh, particular fuel tank because it's too fiddly and really practically impossible to film because of the duration of the process and the sort of figuring things out but you can see that i used some of the parts from this canon and company emd fuel tank set now the thing is it doesn't give you any photos or anything but i did find uh, a uh, this online that describes all these parts that come in the kit for this update kit. Now this isn't going to be the same on every EMD tank because they're all different. You got to go by your reference photo. I have many reference photos of most of the tank 
on this uh, locomotive you can see here the fuel filler and the little bleed hose line etc so I've put in as much as I could uh, that I thought would made sense this is the front um, and you can see some of these lines that will run up under the frame I attached to the tank at the risk of breaking them off but I couldn't think of any other way to attach them really to make them part of the model so um, so yeah so that's pretty much it uh, I just like to treat it like a separate model so you can see where the white is the, the evergreen plastics I used okay there's a little bit of the weld there's a big heavy weld bead on this tank it must have been I think they rebuilt this whole unit like this whole SD35 was completely like gone over like I saw the unit up live I was up close to it and looking it over and it's just a like it looks like it's brand new off the assembly line but but it was built in you know I don't know I think 1964 I think um, so anyway yeah so I used uh, about half of these parts in here and then you know this is evergreen the white uh, these ho these pipes and uh, etc I had to remake these airlines because the ones with the kit were just broke they were so fragile they just pretty much fell apart when you handled them and then you can see where I added just the you know the cannon fuel filler pipe and then I added a little uh, breather hose sort of back venting breather hose um, and the and the uh, the gauges on the side and yeah so it really makes for a nice uh, fuel tank I'll just put it up here and show you a quick and closing on this part. See, the beauty of HO, I'll just say this now in closing, is you can model like this and you can make the locomotive one of a kind, okay? There's nothing wrong with all the locomotives. I mean, there's never been a better time for locomotives now. But the beauty of HO is its modeling integrity. Let me just zoom out for a sec. So you can find a prototype locomotive and you can detail, get all the photos you can, detail it up and make it your own. And you're the only one with that locomotive. Most likely. Okay. So that's the beauty of super detailing your own uh, model in HO scale. Okay.